Good morning, and welcome to worship at the United Methodist Church of Red Bank. My name is Reverend Jessica Brenler Nolte, and I serve here at this amazing church that is passionate about serving and loving God and one another. We're so glad that you have joined us for worship this day, and we invite you to take advantage of the clickable links which are provided for you. You'll see a link for our online bulletin, our online giving option, our connection card, which lets you register your attendance and share any prayer requests you have with us. And the last link is for our children's Faith in Action handout. We invite you to check out what's going on in the life of the church through the church calendar, which can be found on our website. If it's a Zoom meeting or a small group that's meeting online, there will more likely than not be a clickable link for you there. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the church office. Um, if you're looking for a way to be an active service, you're welcome to drop off donations for the Backpack Crew Pantry on the back porch of the church any day, any time. The special request for the month of May is pasta. We are working on getting back into church, into the building for various different um, ministries, worship and small groups. Um, one of the exciting things uh, that's new and and just we're very excited about <laughs> is our vacation bible school is going to be in person it'll be modified for a variety of different covid policies um, and procedures but it will be in person the week of july 12th registration is open now through our website if you have any questions or concerns please reach out to pastor tammy and she'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have this evening at 4 p.m., we have our third um, evening service in person, 4 p.m. at the church in the sanctuary. If you have pre-registered, wonderful, your seat is guaranteed. Um, if you have not, but you wanna stop by and attend worship tonight, more than likely there are plenty of seats still available so we invite you to join us for worship tonight at 4 p.m if you wanted to just double check and make sure that there's space for you rather than driving all, driving over feel free to reach out to me today and i'd be happy to let you know whether there's a seat for you or not uh, starting june 6th we will be shifting to simultaneous live stream and in-person worship services on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Um, registration, just like we've been registering for the evening services, registration will be up and uh, require, well, it will be recommended every week. Registration is open from Tuesday at 9 a.m. until Friday at 9 a.m. You get a confirmation later in the day on Friday. Um, and it makes sure that your seat is reserved. As more and more people feel comfortable attending worship, the seats that were a limited capacity, so um, the seats may be full, they may not be, we're not sure yet. So um, just to make sure that you've reserved your seat, go ahead and pre-register. Um, and that's open always the week prior to the Sunday in question. Um, for any and all information about our reopening policies and procedures, what to expect when you come back into the building, please check out our reopening page on the website or feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, as you notice, we have shifted our colors today. Uh, today is Pentecost and we are celebrating this Holy Spirit poured out on the, on the church uh, back in Jesus day but or after in, in the early church days <laughs> but also in our lives and in our church too so happy Pentecost and as we move into our time of worship today let us pause and greet one another with the peace and love of Christ may the peace of Christ be with you amen amen as we now move further into our worship service I invite you to join together with me in the call to worship. I'll be reading the non-bolded text and invite you to join with me in the bolded texts. Spirit of the living God, dance with us on this Pentecost day. Come, whirlwind of wonder. Sing to the groaning of creation. Come, still small voice of hope. 
inflame us with your passion for justice. Come, liberator of all. Wind of God, blow through us. Fire of God, burn within us. Come, Holy Spirit. May we feel God breathing through our worship and receive Holy Spirit inspiration this day. Amen. Now let us join our voices together as we sing our opening song, O Spirit of the Living God. Let us now join our hearts and voices together in the centering prayer. Holy One, for all the ways you speak to us, in rushing wind, in dancing flames, in words we understand, and in all that transcends language, we give you thanks. Send your Spirit upon us once more that when we speak the word of your love, people may hear and understand in their own language, as on that Pentecost day so long ago. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we invite our children to come forward to the television or computer screen for the time with the children. Break out your party hats and the tutors because somebody's got a birthday. I'll give you a hint. It's you and you and you and you and me and everyone who believes in Jesus. Why? It's the church, of course. So, not like the church building. That church is made from brick and wood. 
the church that I'm talking about, it's a real live church that's made of people. It, people like you and me and everyone who has ever loved Jesus. Now that's a lot of cupcakes. If we, the church, celebrate our birthday on a day called Pentecost. Pentecost is the day that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to live inside each one of his followers, just like he promised to do before he ascended to heaven. And what a day our first birthday was. At one minute, Jesus' followers were scared and hiding out, hoping that their gift from Jesus would come soon to help them. And the next thing they knew, here came the Holy Spirit, and not in a gift bag either. Instead, the Holy Spirit came in a big whooshing wind and flames that look like tongues made out of fire that hung over each one of their heads. And just like that, Jesus' followers weren't so afraid anymore. The Holy Spirit had put the spring back in their step again. Why, Jesus' followers felt so full of life that they just burst out of hiding and started to tell everyone they saw all about Jesus and Jesus' love for them. 3,000 people to be exact. And ta-da! The church was born right then and there. All thanks to the Holy Spirit. All thanks the Holy Spirit, we the church are still sharing and telling everyone the good news story about Jesus and Jesus' love for us all 2,000 years later. So what do you say, church? We all agree to keep the celebration going this week by inviting just one more person to join the party. And but first, let's pray for the Holy Spirit's help, just like Jesus' followers, by using the words, come Holy Spirit, come. Simple. On the count of three, one, two, three. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen.
Hear now our focus scripture from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, read from the message interpretation. When the feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong gale force wind. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then, when they heard, one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were blown away. They couldn't, for the life of them, figure out what was going on, and kept saying, Aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. May God add a blessing to the reading and understanding of this work. This morning, as I mentioned, we are celebrating Pentecost, the day in the life of the church where we remember how the Holy Spirit was poured out upon Jesus' followers, as Mark read for us in our story from Acts. The author of that scripture talks about the Holy Spirit whipping through the room like a gale force wind. And then what he describes as tongues of flame, a light on each one gathered in the room. These are pretty interesting descriptions of this Pentecost experience. I, for one, have never seen a flame hovering over someone's head. No matter how full of the spirit they may be. And while I have certainly felt the holy presence of God's Spirit surrounding me, I don't recall it being accompanied by the sound of a rushing wind. What about you? While these images create an intriguing story, it is important for us to remember today that the author of this text is making use of metaphors to talk about God, which is exactly what everyone else does when we talk about God too. While we may have had encounters with the holy and may have spent our entire lives striving to be in close relationship with our God, words simply fail us when we try to capture the full essence of the divine. The best we can do is use metaphors, descriptors that get us close to the mystery of God without ever fully capturing it. What's powerful about this story is not the metaphors alone, for there are other places in our scriptures where God is spoken of in similar ways. For example, in the creation story, where God's spirit hovers over the waters, blowing through the chaos to create life, and then the breath of God enlivening our human bodies. And in the book of Exodus, God's presence is described as a pillar of fire and cloud that traveled with the Israelites through the wilderness as they made their way to the promised land. What is powerful and unique about our Pentecost story is that it describes the Holy Spirit being poured out throughout the community of faith, and not just in the place where they gather, or even over one person to accomplish a specific task, 
but over each and every one. <laughs> that is definitely unique within our scriptures. And in response to being filled with the Holy Spirit, they all start talking about God, sharing their experience of God in such a way that others passing by can understand. Language and difference is transcended and people are drawn in and transformed by their witness. The reason I think that is so important, not only in general, but especially for us today in this time, is because as we are on the verge of getting back into church, to in-person gatherings, there, even when we get to that point, there will still be people joining us from home. And we need to remember that no matter whether we are gathered in the sanctuary or from home, no matter where we are, we are God's beloved and we are blessed with the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon each and every one of us. And that Spirit's power is not just for a strange little head candle trick <laughs> or to hear the rushing wind, but it's for the purpose of inspiration and empowerment. Many of you know how much I relate to and love the metaphor of breath for God's Holy Spirit presence with us. How our breath is the life force of our bodies. We cannot live without the breath in our lungs. So as we breathe in this Holy Spirit wind, we breathe in the Spirit of God. And that is life giving. God's presence fills and strengthens us with every single breath we take. Our God is as close to us as the very air in our lungs. And there is beauty in this strange image of fire hovering over our heads. Like a candle, I guess. But it's not that we're walking around with flames coming out of our head. That's not the powerfulness of it. That would be strange. <laughs> what it's it's what's powerful about it is that the holy spirit god's presence is lighting us up empowering us to be impassioned fired up in ways that we can talk about god and share with others our experience of god's love and grace in our lives in ways that they can understand and relate to it's a gift to share not just to be lift, lit up for our own sake but so that we can share the good news of god's love with others it is an empowerment an embodiment as we are inspired by breath and fiery presence of God's spirit within us as individuals and as a community of faith. This is so important for us as a church today because I know that it has been a long time since we've been together in person. And over the course of the year, it may feel like our fiery faith has cooled off a bit. Some of you are regular every week online worshipers and God bless you for your faithfulness in this hard time and I hope and pray that these remote worship services have been meaningful for you and have been feeding your spirit in a way that has given you strength throughout this challenging season. But I know that it is not the same as being in the same room with people. 
singing together, hearing one another's voices in unison as we pray together, feeling God's Holy Spirit presence move in and through our church. And for those for whom remote worship just isn't cutting it, or who are not even comfortable with trying the technology, they've been disconnected from our worshiping community of faith for almost or over a year. Perhaps they've joined a small group experience through the church and hopefully they've felt connected in through our connection group callers. But folks, it's not the same as getting together in person each week and connecting with one another, feeling that Holy Spirit presence, uniting us and binding us together, inspiring us as a community. And so it is extra important for us to hear this message today. One that says, no matter where you are, no matter what you are doing, God's Holy Spirit can be poured out and is poured out on each one of us, on you and on me, individually and communally. And it can bring us fiery inspiration. It can and does continue to inspire our living, our very breath coming from the Holy Spirit, the blowing wind of God's presence. But one of the most powerful things I love about the metaphor of breath as we speak of the Holy Spirit is that our breath is only life-giving when it is not only received and held on to for ourselves, but also given back out. Respiration includes both inspiration and expiration. <laughs> the in and out balance of both receiving and giving. I love the power of this metaphor for it reminds us that with every single breath, the Holy Spirit is poured into our lives. But it is not only for our benefit alone, simply for us to receive, but also that we give it back out into the world breathing out the Spirit's blessing to others as well. Folks, the Spirit is still at work in our church and in our lives, in our community, in our bodies, and it calls us forth to put that Spirit to work. Breathing in God's blessings so that others may be inspired and fired up in their faith journey as we share it with others. I wonder how the Holy Spirit, as it is poured into you today, and just like it is every day, I wonder how that Spirit is inspiring you, firing you up to pray, to act, to love, to witness, and to share a word of hope with others. How is God's Spirit inspiring and inviting you to be and do the good work of God for such a time as this? As we move into the coming weeks and months, may we remember that we are not only a resurrection people, called to hope, even in the face of despair, but that we are also a people of Pentecost, filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses of God's love and grace in the world. 
May we live out our fiery, passionate faith, inspired by the breath of God each and every day. Amen. Amen. Let us now respond in praise as we sing our song in the midst of new dimensions. Let us now join our hearts in a time of prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your love. Open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us, in the stillness of worship, in the busyness and noise of our neighborhoods, in the joys and celebrations of our lives, in the tragedies 
and struggles that break our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and comfort those who grieve. Grant them the peace that only you can bring. Stir within us a trust in life beyond death as we ponder the mysteries of Christ's resurrection and the hope we have in new and everlasting life. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring wholeness to the sick. Strengthen those who are weak. Heal the wounded and broken. Give rest to the weary. Come, Holy Spirit, and inspire our war warring world to seek peace, to love our enemies, to put away our weapons, to remember the price prayed for our freedom and to care for those who have served. Come, Holy Spirit, and ignite a fire in our bones, a passion for justice that cannot be quenched until all of your children are loved until no one is marginalized or oppressed, until everyone has the opportunity to thrive, until the world is transformed and renewed. Come, Holy Spirit, and revive your church. Liberate us from complacency and apathy. Inspire us with Christ's vision for a world reborn in your love. Help us to recognize our gifts for ministry and to use them in service of others. Transform our hearts and our minds. Fill us with love that overflows. Remind us that there is no greater calling than to love you and to love our neighbors with all that we are and all that you have blessed us with. Gracious God, give us a glimpse of your kingdom emerging around us and drawing us into the new things that you are doing in the world. It is for your kingdom that we now pray filled with your spirit, using the words Jesus taught us as we pray. Our loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. On Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church, I am reminded again of the amazing gifts of a community of faith, both to the individuals who join together in that community, and those who are impacted by its ministry. Together, we bring transformation and hope, drawing one another closer to God and joining together as we serve our neighbors. We here at the United Methodist Church of Red Bank, like the early church, share in these tasks together as we support the church with our prayers, presence, gifts, service and witness, accomplishing together what we could never do on our own. It is a blessing to be a part of such a transformational community of faith. And I give thanks for your continued generosity every day. As we are worshiping remotely, there are a few ways to contribute financial gifts to the church. You're welcome to mail a check into the church office. You can have your bank do that on your behalf. You can drop by for our in-person worship services again tonight at 4 p.m. or starting June 6th every Sunday at 10 a.m. and put your offering in the plate right there. Or you can utilize our online giving option and the link is provided for you. Now let us offer our gifts to God empowering the transformational ministry of our church. 
Amen. the Lord of my soul, oh my soul, worship God's holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, how Let us pray. Inspiring God, the spirit you pour down upon us brings us new life and invites us into active service and ministry with you. We are grateful that you are continually at work in our lives and the world to fulfill your promises. May our giving today show our trust in you as we continue to work in and through our church. We pray in the name of the one who is our resurrection hope. Amen. Amen. Now let us sing together our closing hymn for the morning, As a Fire is Meant for Burning.
Before you receive the benediction, I want to remind you of two things. First is our Fellowship Hall Zoom call, which immediately follows our service today. The other option for today is our 4 p.m. in-person service. And we'll be celebrating the birth of the church. We'll be celebrating Pentecost in person. So I invite you to, to stop by at 4 uh, or arrive about 15 minutes early to, to help the check-in process go smoothly and let us worship in person together today. And now let us receive this blessing as we go forth. As we are sent out from this time of worship, may the power of the Holy Spirit be continually poured out into our hearts and lives. May we go out dancing in joy serving with love and boldly sharing our witness of Christ's redeeming power in our lives. May we feel the Spirit's presence within us and working through us this week, bringing about transformation in our lives and in the world around us. Amen. Amen. <laughs>